Hello boxing fans, right now I'm talking about Robert Stieglitz versus Arthur Abraham. I'm going to apologise in advance because I'm not sure how my um, sound system's working right now. It's not been working too well as of late. I don't know if it's my laptop, my headset, yeah so I'll have to see how it goes. Anyway, right, this is a bout for the WBO Super Middleweight title. We've got starting with the champion, Robert Stieglitz. He is 42 wins, 23 by way of knockout. To two losses, both by way of knockout. So that's 44 wins all together. Uh, sorry, 44 fights all together. And he is the champion. Looking at his opponent, Arthur Abraham. He has 34 wins, 27 by way of knockout. To only three defeats, all by decision. One by disqualification, but that was a bit iffy anyway. And that's a 37 fight career. If let's go straight into the advantages and who's got what. We look at the power. First of all, we know this goes with... Arthur Abraham, he does it hard, right? He's naturally heavy-handed. Every shot he throws is intended to destroy you. There are no soft shots thrown. On the other hand, we do know that Stieglitz does not hit hard. Four of his last five wins have came, have went the full 12 rounds and have been decisions. There was one that was a disqualification, but that was in the 11th round against an opposition that was basically knocked out by... Almost every other world-class opponent, even Andre, would be knocking this guy out, right? When you look at the um, speed, we know that's with Stieglitz, right? Abraham does wind his shots up. He can be a good boxer, but you can see his shots coming. I think his hand speed is severely overrated. I think he's very one-dimensional. And I also think that you can read his shots. If you disagree with that, disagree with that. But that's what I think. I can see his shots coming before he throws them. Stieglitz, however, you know, he is quick. He puts his shots together very well. You know, he does he does it in a similar fashion to Povekin did against Marco Hook. And we know how that fight went. It was really close. Good fight. And correct me if I'm wrong, you know, I think Marco Hook actually fights in a similar fashion towards Arthur Abraham. He makes his shots count. He goes for the power shots. So, realistically, we know we're in for a good fight here. Looking at the movement, and I've picked Robert Stieglitz as the better man in this department. Robert is quicker, he's got better foot movement, he uses it to a boxing advantage, he moves around the ring well, he can cut off the ring, he can back away and move around the ring in a defensive manner. On the other hand, Abraham, he's had to work on cutting down the ring before, and he's been ineffective against people who do not stand in front of him, and like examples could be Andre Durrell, who basically, I don't think Abraham was going to get to him before the knockout slash DQ. I don't. I didn't think he was going to get to him. I can give credit to Durrell there because I'm not a big fan of Durrell, but I, I think Durrell was winning that fight. Was going to win that fight at a canter, really. Looking next, and we're going to boxing ability. This is a Stieglitz advantage. Realistically, we do know Robert Stieglitz is the better boxer. His game has been adapted to working on his shots, getting a few clean shots in, outboxing his opponents over the full 12 rounds. And he doesn't look for the stoppage, mostly because he knows, right, he's got to secure the, the cards first. And then if the stoppage comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And a lot of time, especially more recently, it's not been coming. And I've got to point out, look at the quality of opposition he's been facing. They've not been brilliant. They've not been world class. I'm sorry, but they haven't. So he's not a puncher, but he has been able to outbox a lot of guys. And he's won almost every round of his last two or three fights. Just putting that out there, okay? against second tier guys right Abraham I don't think he's a brilliant boxer I think he relies on his power game in the um in the amateurs he wasn't a brilliant amateur he made it as far as European level he did well on the European you know amateurs but he's never done anything like on the world level unlike other some of the of his opponents like Froch who's a world who got bronze at the world championships obviously Ward Olympic what he does though it works for him. He's got a, a style that works well for him in Germany. You understand? He covers up. He doesn't let any clean shots through. He keeps the round close by exchanging jabs. And then he nullifies his opponent by getting them to come to him. While they're attacking, he, he pulls them into a false sense of security. And then he pounces and he throws the kitchen sink at his opponent in a 10 second flurry. Realistically, you know, anywhere else in the world... If you're a boxing fan, you understand. He may only land two or three shots out of 12. You understand? But if they landed cleaner, then that's how he gets the cards. That's how I see it. 
I mean, like, his opponent may land, like, 12 scuffed shots, but if he lands three, you can't expect to get the, the uh, points decision. It's the same with other boxers around the world. Chin, looking at the chin, we know Abraham has the chin. This guy has been hit with almost every shot in the book, and he's hardly been wobbled. You know, he fought he fought with a shattered jaw against Miranda. Now, take note before you go big woo Miranda, yeah? Victor Ortiz crumbled with a broken jaw. Just, just uh, get that in your head. And Victor Ortiz, unfortunately, he is a world-class opponent. He is. He took some shots off Jermaine Taylor before knocking him flat out. He didn't take any clean shots, but he took shots. He took full shots from Andre, Andre Durrell. He did go down off balance, but then he came back and hospitalised Andre, Andre Durrell. Sorry. I don't, I don't really see... You can understand how, how that fight went. He was totally destroyed by Carl Froch, and I mean fucking decimated. You understand? I mean, Arthur Abraham thought Jet Li, Van Damme, and Steven Seagal were in there kicking the shit out of him for the whole 12 rounds, and he still didn't go down. You know, this man, love him or hate him, he can take a beating. He can take a kicking. On the other hand, yeah, you've got Robert Stieglitz, who has two losses by way of knockout. Now, the face was due to him being Karn-esque, taking unnecessary chances and walking into shots. He did get up, but the referee stopped the fight because he was taking shots, you know. He went down twice, and, he, you know, he, he didn't need to take those shots, but he did. The second loss was against Andrade, and he was doing well. He was landing the clean shots, you know, on the, on the chin. His lack of power, you know, is was to blame because he couldn't finish the job, landing clean shot after clean shot after clean shot. You know, if this was, um, let's point this out, um, it, would, it would be a good example. George Groves, yeah? George Groves would have finished the job because when George Groves landed some fl uh, flush clean shot on Sierra, Sierra was down and I'm not, I'm not sure, he was out. He got up somehow and then Groves went straight back to it. You know, Stieglitz can't put you down. He, can, he literally cannot put you down. If he cannot outbox you for the whole 12 and not take take punishment himself, then he's got no other, he's got no other plan. There's no, he can't knock you out. You know, against, against like I said, Andrade, he, he landed the better shots. He took another chance again, and it caught up with him. He took a big right hand, which shook him to his core. He didn't cover up well, and then he took a few more shots, and the referee stopped it. People might say uh, it was a bit quick. I don't know, you know, he's taking clean shots. If he takes clean shots like that off Arthur Abraham, who is a much more concussive puncher than Andrade or that other guy he lost to, you know, it, the fight's going to be over. Moving on to heart, both of these guys show tremendous heart. They both come forward, they both put it on the line. Abraham's ability to, you know, take a shot, you know, and keep trying for the full 12 rounds is rivaled by nobody. Maybe Margarito and Andrade, you know, those guys are also brilliant at taking shots. Abraham is the same. When we look at Stieglitz, he does show tremendous heart because he gets up from the shots that put him down. You know, some of these shots... I've been big shots. They would slay a bear, but he still gets up and keeps coming forward. He is a bit like a more feather-fisted version of Amir Khan. That is a good way of explaining it. But once again, if he walks into shots against Abraham, will this be the end of Abraham? Oh, sorry, end of Stieglitz. And it, you got to say it's a possibility. But we're going to get a good fight out of this. I can almost tell you that. Form and mental toughness, Stieglitz does have the advantage. He is coming off a few wins. He... He does have the WBO World title, and he's the better boxer going into this fight. Abraham has not had the best of time. He did lose to Dirrell by D DQ, decimated by Carl Froch, and then beaten by Andre Ward also. His last two fights have been anticlimactic. I think he's passed his best, but is he still good enough to um, beat Robert Stieglitz? Realistically, and this is me, me being honest, Abraham has not looked brilliant, has not looked great or good since he beat uh, Jermaine Taylor three years ago. That's that's enough to say, really. However, I'm going to go tell you how, I got, how I've got the fight going now. And I see this fight as a clear victory by Arthur Abraham. And I'm talking knockout victory. And I'll be putting money on the knockout victory. And I'm not only going to tell you that, I'm going to tell you why. Okay? The level of opposition that Stieglitz has been facing lately has not been great. But he has been winning the rounds. I understand he will be doing okay on the cards against Arthur Abraham. But when I look at Abraham's losses, they've been unavoidable. He was never going to outbox Andre Ward. Realistically, we should have saw the Andre Durrell 
uh, result coming if Abraham didn't catch up to him. And the Frotch one, there's nothing he could do about the Frotch fight because Frotch just destroyed him. Stieglitz, his defeats have been very avoidable, okay? Because he takes these chances, he takes too many chances, he gets caught and then that's it. That's what happens when, when he gets caught. And because of that, I don't think he'll be able to take chances against Abraham. If he does take chances and he pays for them, Abraham's going to knock him out. The point is, I see Abraham knocking him out. I see him knocking him out. I see him going in, you know, Stieglitz going in, landing a few good shots on the shell of Abraham, but then his defences when he attacks will be lower and he'll get caught with a right hook from Abraham. He'll get up, but he'll be put down again by Abraham and it'll be a knockout. That's how I see it going. Tell me what you think about this fight. Tell me if you think this is going to be a good fight or not. 